A brave new world on Europe's eastern border. Turkey, regional powerhouse, a hub for energy, tourism and manufacturing. Some say a western-leaning country of moderate Islam, putting demons like the era of military rule behind it. But for others in this nation of 75 million people, old demons have been replaced by new ones. A leaning towards authoritarianism, suppression of the media, control of the judiciary, all no-go areas for the European Parliament, which in May is debating progress on accession. Critics point to anti-government protests in Gezi Park in Istanbul and across the country in 2013. Among them, Mine Kirikanat, a columnist for one of Turkey's oldest independent newspapers. Ils ont nourri pendant deux mois l'espoir d'un pays plus libre. Et pour la première fois de cette dernière 13 années, la, la jeunesse a cassé toutes les frontières entre les clivages politiques pour être les Kurdes, les lesbiens, les gays, les musulmans, les laïcs, tous ensemble. This was a Turkish take on the Arab Spring, starting as a protest against plans to bulldoze a popular green space, morphing into a protest against the rule of President Tayyip Erdogan. Like the Arab Spring, social media played no small part. Le rôle essentiel, vital, parce que ils s'envoyaient des messages. C'était un peu le cache-cache entre le chat et la, et la, et la souris. Et pour deux mois, c'est les souris qui ont gagné. Events in the past two years, says Mine, now call into question Turkey's accession process. Et si aujourd'hui vous, vous me posez la question, est-ce que la Turquie a sa place dans l'Union européenne Je vous dirais non. Il ne faut surtout pas prendre la Turquie avec ce régime. I put some of these criticisms to Turkey's ambassador to the EU. Turkey has made much progress, and uh, people should not look at some isolated incidents. They should look at the big picture. Freedom of speech, uh, the rights that we've given to the Kurdish people. We should see that we are wanted, and that we have to make certain developments and some progress. But in the end, if we do so, then we'll be as a member. What we're hearing at times is that even if we do all that, we won't be members. In Istanbul, Cumhuriyet is heavily protected. They've received threats to their safety and the economic welfare of the paper for its opposition stance, most recently against a new homeland security law that would give the police sweeping powers of arrest, search and detention. But its editors fear the EU accession process is in jeopardy for other reasons. I don't think that the EU will accept Turkey for religious reasons and for reasons of our different identities. I believe Turkey will get accession on a different status, as Nicolas Sarkozy of France has put it. Because of all this, Turkish people are full of resentment towards the EU. Another problem on Turkey's and Europe's shoulders is the G word. The genocide, killing or forced relocation, depending on your take, of up to 1.5 million minority Armenians by the Ottomans in 1915. Turkey refuses to use the word. Others in Europe, including Pope Francis and the European Parliament, have. On the day of the centenary, Cumhuriyet surprised readers, splashing the headline, Huge Catastrophe in Armenian. It is quite clear that the word genocide is a big mental block for the people and also for the state, even if our governments come and go. Into this soup comes the Kurdish question. President Erdogan has won praise, like none of his predecessors, for launching a peace process with nationalists. The EU is recognized as having pushed the process along, but according to Kurdish leaders, not nearly enough. The EU has not played the role that it could have played until now. If the EU played its role better, the process could have gone much faster, much more smoothly. He's a supporter of EU accession. Europe needs Turkey and Turkey needs Europe, he says, but both need the Kurds. The Kurdish people are involved in a life or death war against the most dangerous organizations like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. They are not a threat. Rather a safety valve, an Iceland of safety for Turkey and the world against ISIS. 
Back in Brussels, the lead author of Parliament's report on Turkey's progress update has to pick a balanced pathway through all of this. Turkey has made huge steps, huge leaps. When you see also in terms of media, if you compare it over a period of 15 years, Turkey has done tremendous steps forward. If you don't look, over the last year, we see a backlash. You also see, unfortunately, too often still interference by politicians into the judiciary. A slightly different emphasis from one of the report's co-authors. Turkey is, uh, sits in a very key strategic position and has been um, a NATO ally for over 50 years. And we need to ensure that Turkey remains firmly in the Western democratic camp. Add to that, says Turkey's ambassador to the EU, his country's reception of around 2 million mostly Syrian refugees. But, he adds, the key issue for accession lies west, not east. We have to resolve a major issue, which is the Cyprus problem. If we do that, then all of the chapters will be open. Big issues then confronting a country in the throes of transformation and transition. It's election season right now. Everyone expects President Erdogan's party to win comfortably. But political changes are afoot in Turkey's next parliamentary term, and European politicians are hoping they'll be able to have an influence on those.